Okay, I'm going to show you this little circuit, and this circuit is based on a Mealy machine, Mealy state machine, and I'm going to show you how it works, and I want you to guess how many states this Mealy machine has in it. So the way this machine works is it's got a passive infrared sensor that you see up there on the top left, and if I pass my hand over it, you see this LED kick on here and it's going to have a delay of 11 seconds to prevent spurious triggering this is designed to uh, be put out in the woods uh, next to a trail and count the number of uh, critters two-legged and four-legged that happen to walk by it and I wanted something very very simple just a simple circuit so it's ready to trigger again. I move my hand, it'll trigger. So every time something walks by it, it triggers. And what it's doing is it's building up a count. And if I want a report or I want to see how many times it's triggered, I will press this little black button here and you'll see the other LED will blink the number of times that it has been triggered. This little red switch here resets the unit. So if I press this red button and then press the black button, you see I get nothing because it's been reset to zero. So how many states do you think that this little machine has in it? And the answer is it has exactly two states, state zero and state one. Now you might look at this as sort of the run state and this as the report state. And while it's in this state, it's looking at the two switches that I showed you, the black switch that's the report button and the red button which is the reset button or clear button. So if it's spinning in this state as the clock is clocking the chip, if it doesn't see either one of those switches pressed, it's going to stay in the state. But if it sees this second switch press, which is the red switch, it is going to clear the count, but it will go right back to this state again. Now, this is the big difference between the Mealy machine and the Moore machine, because in the Mealy machine you can do things like this. Remember uh, my presentation on the difference between the Mealy and the Moore machine, I said that the outputs can change instantaneously with the input, and here we take advantage of that. We're staying right here in state zero, but when they press that red button, it sends a signal to the hardware to clear the hardware, but it doesn't change states. Now if we see the black button press, which is switch one, we will come over here to this state and we will run the report. I'll show you the hardware in a minute to show you how this works, but basically what will happen is as the clock is clocking this chip, we're going to sit here and spin in this state until we see a signal from the hardware saying that the report is finished. And when the report is finished, it's finished signal here, we go back to this state and we spin in this state. Now what's interesting about this, if you're in this state, it will completely ignore the switches because none of the criteria here, either for output or for changing states, relies on the condition of switch one or switch two. It really doesn't care. So essentially what happens is while it's running the report, it's going to go ahead and run the report till it's finished, then it will jump back over here and you can either run another report if you didn't get the count right or you can reset the unit and start from scratch again. So we saw that we had a very very simple state machine architecture. As a matter of fact here we have our 107 dual JK flip-flop and we're only using half of it. The other half of the flip-flop chip is not even being used, JK flip-flop um, number two. And what's happening is that the passive infrared signal is coming into here and that delay that we saw is being generated by a one-shot here, so the state machine doesn't have to even do that. So most of the things that are happening in this circuit are happening independently of the state machine. Could they have been managed under the direction of the state machine? Absolutely. But as you can see from the previous state machine state diagram, that you can do it in a much more simple way a lot of times. Let the hardware do what the hardware does best. It doesn't have to be managed most of the time. What we've got here is we've got two binary counters. This, this binary counter is being triggered 
by the passive infrared signal that's coming in and it's incrementing a count here. This is the counter that's being reset to zero when we press the red button, which is under the control of the stay machine. This counter right here is the report counter. So what happens is when we press the black button, where the state machine is sending a signal over here to gate the, the clock that's normally clocking the JK flip-flop. It'll gate that clock through this counter and it will start incrementing the count starting from uh, from zero or one and basically that red light that you saw coming on is really just the clock going into this, this chip. This is a comparator, an 8-bit magnitude comparator so that when this count gets up to equal the count that was already stored from the passive infrared in this counter we will get an out output here out of this comparator and that's that finish signal FIN and that goes back here and it trips the state machine to go back into state zero um, where it's more of the run mode. But you can see that most of this stuff can be done independently of the control of that state machine. So here we have a mealing machine with only two states that's managing all of this hardware.